Good evening, friends, and welcome to the first session in 2023 of Mindful Living. I really appreciate your taking out the time and joining us for this session today. Joining this session is a clear demonstration of your intention to gain leadership insights from the scriptures which contain wisdom that is eternal. We live in a VUCA world, volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. There is war happening somewhere. There is terrorist attack happening somewhere. We are battling with inflation, extreme climate. Some places it is very hot, some places it is very cold. And there are so many problems that we are surrounded with. There is uncertainty uh, around COVID coming back again. And it is in times like this, people look up to strong leaders, leaders whether in the business world or in the corporate world. And the leaders themselves turn to the wisdom that is there uh, in the ancient scriptures. In times, in uncertain, volatile times like this, leaders need lighthouse of solid principles which can be relied upon at all times. And it is in this context that we have organized the session on leadership gems from Bhagavad Gita, gaining insights into the eternal leadership principles. And our speaker today is Mr. Rakesh Sharma, an eminent business coach who has coached more than 200 small and medium business enterprise owners. He's an engineer and MBA from Canadian School of Management and has worked with blue chip organizations like Xerox, VSNL, Tata Indicom, Videocon, and Airtel. I have had the privilege of working with Rakeshi in Xerox about 20, 25 years back. The best part about Rakeshi that I like is that he applies the wisdom which is there in these ancient scriptures in his consulting and coaching assignments. And that is the reason, uh, one of the reasons that has led to the stupendous growth that his coaching and consultancy clients have uh, you know, got in while undergoing coaching and consulting with him. Rakesh ji, we really appreciate your taking out time and joining us today. Thank you very much uh, uh, to all and uh, especially the uh, mindful community. And uh, I'm really privileged to be part of the mindful community. So thanks to everybody. And I hope that all of you who are giving your precious time for this session are definitely going to be benefited. Thank you. Thank you, Rakeshi. Thank you for being a part of this community. And friends, some of you are joining us for the first time. Allow me a minute to introduce myself. My name is Ashish Kumar, and I am the founder of Mindful Living. I started Mindful Living in December 2018. Prior to that, I worked in the corporate sector for more than 25 years in senior management roles with organizations like Xerox, Tata AIG, Future Generali, Marsh, HCL Healthcare, and Healthcare at Home. During the years of my working with the corporate sector, I saw at close quarters how stressed the employees in the corporate sector are and how this stress takes a toll on their health, happiness, and well-being. Being a certified mindfulness teacher myself, I thought that the message of living mindfully, living consciously, needs to be taken to the corporate sector. And with that vision of impacting the lives of 1 million professionals, we set up Mindful Living in 2018, December. This is our fifth year, and I'm very happy to share with you that in the last uh, four years, we have conducted over 300 sessions that has impacted the lives of more than 10,000 employees in the corporate sector that include leading organizations like Aditya Birla Group, Tata Group, IBM, Kotak Life, SDFC Life, Signify, Schneider, Airbnb, and many other leading organizations. The session today is not a podcast. It is not even a TV show. So I would urge you to keep your cameras on and engage actively uh, with the speaker. You could do that 
using the reactions button in the toolbar, uh, you can uh, share, show thumbs up, uh, uh, you know, heart emoji for if you like something that Mr. Rakesh Sharma shares with you. We will have question answers towards the end of the session, but during the session, please stay engaged and keep putting your questions in the chat or showing your reactions using the reactions tool. On that note, Rakesh ji, I would like to invite you to take this session on leadership gems from Bhagavad Gita forward. And once again, welcome everybody. Thank you, Ashish. Thank you very much. Thanks. So let me just uh, open my file for you all. Hope the file is visible to everybody. Yes, Rakesh ji. Okay. So friends, thank you very much for uh, taking time out and especially on the January 1st. For many people, it's a holiday. For many people, it is uh, the time when you are meeting your family members and you are enjoying. But if you are still here for the session, that means a lot. And that means that you really value the learning which you are expecting from this session. Let me tell you, this session is as it is, uh, the, as it is titled, The Leadership Gems from Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita is something which is very close to my heart. And especially in the Indian culture, it is close to everybody's heart. And there are people who have been talking about Bhagavad Gita, not only in India, but across the world. So today we are actually going to talk something very, very precious about Bhagavad Gita. And I will give you my version, my version of my understanding, what I actually understand from Bhagavad Gita. Let me give you a little brief about myself that how I am associated and how I am talking about Bhagavad Gita. Uh, it's, it's been uh, uh, almost 12 years when I started my journey of uh, coaching and uh, consulting. Before that, I was working with the industry as, as Ashish ji has already mentioned about that. I will not repeat that. And when I got into the coaching and consulting at that point of time, I actually faced lots of challenges. And that was the time when I started reading Bhagavad Gita. And I also became part of uh, ISKCON. While I was participating very actively in ISKCON and uh, I was reading Bhagavad Gita, I realized that it is the wealth, it is the mine of the knowledge. And it is not only about bhakti, rather it is about the life. It is about how you lead life in any kind of situation which life may impose on you. So the kind of challenges which I was facing at that point of time, and I was looking forward to various answers, I got the answers to all my questions at that point of time. And I realized that uh, it is, uh, it is time that when we should actually take the learnings of Bhagavad Gita to the masses, because there are people who are still looking forward to looking forward to a better life. We are we are a machine. If you look at this body is a machine, and this life is very complex. And the VUCA uh, uh, concept has already been introduced to you by Ashish. So considering that it is so volatile and it is so changing every day. There is no manual for the life as such, but Bhagavad Gita is. And when I actually understood that, that Bhagavad Gita actually works as a manual, then I started uh, contemplating a more. And uh, I not only read one version of the Bhagavad Gita, but actually I read so many of them. And I started actually uh, finding out the gems out of it. Some of the things which I am going to talk about today is 
all that learnings and all the, all that readings which I did during these years. Hope you'll find it useful and you'll be able to enjoy it. So uh, the first thing first, Guru Vandana, Om Gyan Timirandhase Gyananjan Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yen Tasme Shri Guru Venama Shri Chetan Manu Vishtam Mistapitam Yen Bhutale Swam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swepadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Utpad Kamlam Shri Guru Vaishnavansha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sehagan Ragnathan Vitam Tam Sanjeevam Sadhvedvatam Sadvatam Savdhutam Parijan Sahitam Krishna Chetan Nedevam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sagan Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitansha Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare So let me start with this. Krishna says that Ye Yatha Maam Prapadyante Tansthati Bhajamiham Mam Vartmanu Vartante Manusha Partha Sarvasha. Hey Arjun, howsoever the man seeks me, even so I do approach them. For all men follow my path in every way. So he says ki jo manush jis prakar se mujhe bhazte hai, mein bhi unko usi prakar se bhazta hoon, kyunki sabhi manush sab prakar se mere hi patka anusaran kar rahe hai. What, what is meant by this is that different people will actually have different type of understanding from the life of Krishna. When it comes to Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavad Gita is only a very small piece of life of Krishna. It is only 45 minutes. Bhagavad Gita as it is said, it was spoken only in 45 minutes. So out of the entire life of more than 120 years of Krishna, it is only 45 minutes. And during this time, he actually gives the knowledge to the entire world, which actually has been showing the path since then and going to show the path to humankind in times to come. So he says that Jolog, in whatever way, people worship me in whatever way people see me, I also actually show them the same kind of wisdom. So there are people who have been uh, uh, seeing Krishna as guru. There are people who have been seeing Krishna as strategist, as leader, as warrior, or somebody like uh, people also gave the name as Ranchor Das. So there are different type of connotations which uh, are associated with the Krishna. And he says very clearly that, uh, so I do reflect to them. So what I'm going to share with you is my own understanding of uh, Krishna and his life, my own understanding of Bhagavad Gita and what he is trying to tell Arjun. And this may be right, this may be wrong, but whatever I understood and whatever I implemented and whatever I saw giving me results, I am actually going to share that with you. And probably that might make some sense to you. So another thing what actually prompted me over here was that Bhagavad Gita is a holy book. It is considered to be a religious book. And as a result of that, in Hindu families, it is always it is always kept at a place which is a holy place, a temple. It is generally wrapped in, uh, in, in Kesariya, in kind of a color of a cloth. And after that, it is generally not read. There are very few people who would actually read Bhagavad Gita. And there are very few people who would really make sense out of it. And most of the people think that Bhagavad Gita is all about the bhakti. But actually, it is not so. And when it comes to bhakti, people actually think that bhakti is to be done only after 75 years. And we are young at this point of time. So it is actually of no use to us. But it is not so. 
even for a boy of 14 years bhagavad gita is equally important and somebody who is on the deathbed bhagavad gita is very very meaningful at that point of time also so it is very very important that we should unwrap this book now and start using it as the manual of life so that we can make the best use of life and we are actually going to understand that what is the meaning of life why should we lead a beautiful life we can actually understand from krishna only so as a part of a mindful living community we have a vision and we have a mission to help more than a million people to lead happy and prosperous life by implementing the eternal wisdom of bhagavad gita the problem is that there are lots of people who think that bhagavad gita is something related to religion but it is not so and there are so many other than hindus also who have been reading bhagavad gita we study bhagavad gita and the other scriptures puran and vedanta and others and bring their knowledge their wisdom so that we can lead a happy day to day life we relate the modern psychology and the spiritual psychology which are given into our scripts and we try to find out a common way which we can give to the people so that they can lead happy and prosperous and peaceful life we plan to conduct online and offline courses and we have been actually doing that in past as well and in future we are aggressively planning to do that the money which we get from such kind of programs are actually reinvested in uh, uh, marketing and in bringing uh, this knowledge in taking this knowledge to the people so that they can make use of this precious knowledge into their life we invite every one of you if you are interested in learning and implementing the teaching of indian spiritual wisdom to the masses you can actually become part of this journey we invite you all and you can invest your time money efforts and become part of our community and take it forward the first beneficiary are going to be you yourself unless you actually understand and then also try and implement the knowledge you will not be able to become the beneficiary so to become actually the beneficiary first you have to understand and then you have to also try and implement the more you implement the more you will be able to actually have the conviction and talk about it so let us talk about some facts and why i am talking about these facts about bhagavad gita because we need to actually understand that how powerful this wisdom has been how how powerful this entire literature has been and how ignorant we have been all these years so first along with arjun the knowledge of bhagavad gita was acquired by lord hanuman sanjay and barbaric and going forward we'll actually talk about it you understand these people arjun was there uh, in 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 front of krishna hanuman was there on the chariot sanjay was listening it sitting in kurukshetra and barbaric was also there in the battlefield he was listening his head was listening so bhagavad gita is a 700 verse sanskrit scripture out of which krishna spoke 574 arjun spoke 84 dhritarashtra spoke one only and sanjay spoke 41 shlokas so this is how the entire 700 shlokas are distributed gita has been translated into 175 languages of the world and the first english translation of bhagavad gita was done in 1785 by charles wilkinson in london before arjun 
Krishna tried to narrate this knowledge to Duryodhan, but Duryodhan refused to listen to it. He said very clearly, Ke, bah, Krishna, whatever you are actually telling me, I know all this. My problem is that despite knowing, I do what I do. So he simply made this statement and after that, Krishna didn't uh, try speaking to him on this. Gita has 18 chapters. Gita has 18 chapters. And they are divided into six into six, uh, six plus six plus six. The first six chapters are called Karma Yoga. This is very, very important. Try and understand this, friends. It's very important. Karma Yoga. So the Karma Yoga, first six chapters are dedicated to Karma Yoga. And then the next six chapters are dedicated to Bhakti Yoga. And last six chapters are dedicated to Gyan Yoga. Now here, whether it is Karma Yoga or Bhakti Yoga or Gyan Yoga, all these three paths you can take to lead a happy and prosperous life. And you can actually finally reach to Nirvana. Nirvana does not mean that you are uniting with God. What it means is that you are actualizing yourself to the extent that you yourself become a divine life. You yourself become a divine life. You become liberated. You are not getting uh, disturbed by small or big uh, uh, problems of life. So you can follow any of these three paths. And even if, let's say, you have the, uh, the, 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 the qualities that you are somebody who has got uh, Rajas, Rajas Gun. So if you have Rajas Gun, which means that you are a Karam Yogi type of person and the entire first six chapters are dedicated to Karam Yoga. So you can go through those six chapters and you can find out your own way to lead a happy and prosperous life and happy life with Bhagavad Gita. University of Cambridge has added Bhagavad Gita in its course curriculum to benefit the students. This is one example, but even in Arabian countries, Saudi Arab also has included Bhagavad Gita in some of the courses and across the world, it, it is being taught in different forms. So but how do you find it? If you find it uh, awesome, just write O on the chat quickly. Let me just understand that you are there with me. Just quickly respond, please. I need to have your energy. Great, thank you, thank you. So why Bhagavad Gita? Why Bhagavad Gita and not the modern motivational speakers? These days, as you can see, that Bhagavad Gita is uh, uh, lagging behind, whereas lots of lots of motivational gurus are coming forward. But here we are talking about Bhagavad Gita. So let us understand that why it is so. The first thing is that uh, Bhagavad Gita comes directly from Krishna, the most, the most authentic knowledge in the world, the most authentic knowledge in the world. Why? Because it directly comes from the mouth of incarnation. And, and it was delivered almost 75,442 years ago. And since then, it has been continuously showing the path to everybody across the world. All the motivational gurus have referred Gita time and again. Some of the very, very famous names like Stephen Covey, Werner Erard, Van Dyer, Dr. Deepak Chopra, Vivek Bindra, Sandeep Maheshwari, and so many others have been referring Gita again and again for various things. In fact, if I talk about uh, Werner Erard, the founder of Landmark, he has created the entire course, the entire course based on Bhagavad Gita. 
and you will get you will actually get amazed that how is he talking about bhagavad gita but he doesn't name this course at all as bhagavad gita modern psychologist call young sigmund freud and adler and so many others have taken their clues from bhagavad gita only so it's a book of human psychology it's a book of spiritualism it's a book of karm yoga it's a book of bhakti yoga and you will find your taste of whatever kind of taste you may have but you will be able to find your taste in bhagavad gita let us understand a little more modern psychologists are still struggling with lots of questions which have already been answered by bhagavad gita the more you read it every time you read it you will find something new i told you that uh, from uh, almost 12 years i have been reading and uh, every time i read it i suddenly find something new every time i read it i find something new so so there is no ending actually about the teachings of bhagavad gita modern western philosophy deals with man as matter and ignores the subtle aspect of life it doesn't talk the modern psychology doesn't talk about uh, i it doesn't talk about atma it is only talks about the mind but mind is only a part of human being and gita talks about the entire human being the gita talks about the human being in entirety so that's the key difference and that is why gita is more powerful modern motivational guru says one way of success whereas whereas gita suggest a multi dimensional way which we have already spoken about gita has been delivered in most relevant situation the most relevant situation the battle field the battle field and everyday life everyday life is actually the battle field for a human being from morning till morning till evening every moment of the life we are actually struggling for something or the other now you can understand that such an important and such a vast and such a deep wisdom being delivered in the battlefield there has to be some purpose behind it it was not just incidental it was not that it happened from somewhere from the uh, fr from some uh, accident that uh, uh, arjun felt demotivated and he surrendered his dhanush and he said that i will not be able to fight this battle it was not incidental rather it was a purpose behind it and the purpose was that this knowledge which was being delivered to arjun actually is not only for arjun rather for rather for each one of us each one of us many people many of us actually say and discard the entire knowledge by saying that i am not arjun and that he was krishna and i don't have that kind of a guru and my situation and arjun situations are different this message was for arjun so such kind of things are generally said are communicated and people don't even give proper attention to what is being taught in gita and as a result of that unfortunately people actually get devoid of huge learning which they can get from this small book of 700 shlokas so krishna says that if it is useful in the battlefield to arjun it is actually useful for each one of us because each one of us are also in the battlefield of life every day arjun is standing on the cross road and not able to take decision and so is true for us we are also standing on the cross road every day and we are actually not able to take decision we are not able to take decision sometimes we are not even to take even the small decisions and there are decisions which are big decisions and the small decisions which we have to take arjun must fight his own 
relatives and his own weaknesses. This is very, very important. This is very, very important. This is what actually is being communicated through this lesson. Arjun has in front of him his relatives. He has his own weaknesses which are pulling him down. And now he is being told that how he can fight his own weaknesses, how he can be related, but is still unrelated un and unaffected. And how he can lead the life, uh, how he can lead the battle of life unemotionally. And how he can see that Bhisham uh, Pidame, who is standing in front of him in the battlefield, appearing to be alive, but actually he is already dead. How he can throw his arrows to his guru and how he can become unemotional in these kind of situations. Those are the important messages which are being given to him. And it is very, very important for us actually to learn that how can we lead a normal life and still be unaffected by very big events, the negative events, especially of life. That's what is the big learning here. Unfortunately, what happens is that we just discard this, that, okay, it was true for Arjun. I am not Arjun, but Arjun was a human being and he also found it difficult to understand initially. And that is why this dialogue went on for 700 shlokas. And Krishna tried his level best to make him understand. So that's the approach which we need to take. Unfortunately, the problem is different. I'll talk about that problem, that why we are actually not understanding which was being told to Krishna, uh, uh, to, to Arjun by Krishna. Uh, Albert Einstein says, why I'm bringing Albert Einstein here, one of the uh, renowned scientists, the biggest scientist in the world, in the history, he has been referring to Gita again and again. And look at what kind of a statement he has made. When I read Bhagavad Gita and reflect about how God created this universe, everything else seems to be so superfluous. Everything seems to be so superfluous. He says that uh, reflect about how God created this universe. Okay. I have made Bhagavad Gita as the source of my inspiration. Okay, as a source of my inspiration and guide for the purpose of scientific investigation and formation of my theories. So, friends, the more you go deeper into the understanding of shlokas, you will find that uh, there are lots of scientific theories which actually have evolved from Gita only, from Gita only. And as we as we will go forward in this course, we will actually understand that how Gita is teaching us science as well. How Gita is teaching us the science as well. Krishna, Krishna's life uh, has been a lesson in itself. As I told you that we should not look at Gita only as the key message, rather it is his life. Whatever, whatever he has said in Gita, he has actually led in his entire life. He has demonstrated that in his entire life. So he has got the clarity of mission, okay? And stuck to his goals. When he was asked that uh, you are the incarnation, Okay, you are the God. Why do you have to take birth? So he said, Pritrana sadhunam vinashai chaduskritam dharm sansthapanarthai sambhavam yuge yuge. So, Pritrana sadhunam. Now look at it. And lots of people ask this question that why are we having this life? What is the meaning of this life? 
and krishna came here as a human being and after his deeds after his life was experienced by the people around him they actually understood that he is not a normal human being he is the incarnation himself but there were at that point of time still there were people who were not understanding him as the incarnation so he gave a message to each one of those people and everybody else that what is the meaning of life from his own life and look at it if we are doing this what krishna did even in even a 1% of that then we will be leading a very happy peaceful and wealthy life he says that i have come here for what paritrana sadhuna which means the welfare of good so all those people who are doing good who are the righteous people i am going to support them i am going to uh, hand their uh, uh, hold their hand and i am going to help them move forward in life that's what we should also be doing through our own life we are surrounded with lots of people who are good people surrounded with people who are not so good people so all those people who are good living a good life supporting others supporting the uh, the the nature the srishti and we should definitely uh, take them to the next level paritrana sadhunam second vinashay cha dushkritam meaning the destroy the evil the destroy the not only evil people but also destroy the evil <coughs> thoughts evil thoughts so that's what we can do in our life we can do in our life so all those evil thoughts which we have we need to get rid of them if we have some evil people around us then we definitely need to help them to get out of those thoughts so that they can also become better people third dharm sansthap narthai so each one of us each one of us actually has this uh, duty in the life this kartavya in life and that duty is that we should be uh propagating strengthening the good principles of life the dharm dharm basically is something which should be done for the betterment of each one of the creature on the planet earth so all that is dharm so he says that i have come here basically for three purposes pratranaya sadhunam vinashaya cha dushkartam aur dharm sansthapanarthay तो उसके लिए मैं संभावी संभवामी युगे युगे मैं युग युग में हर एक युग में जन्म लेता रहता हूं अवतरित होता रहता हूं सो दिस इज व्हाट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ लाइफ फॉर ईच वन ऑफ अस एज वेल एंड दिस इज व्हाट वी शुड एक्चुअली लर्न फ्रॉम हिम ऑन दिस ही इज ऑलवेज विलिंग टू शेयर हिज नॉलेज वेदर इट इज अर्जुन और even duryodhan and uh, all the pandavas and uh, udhav and so many others let us understand little more about him he is a strategist now why i am talking about him as a leader we each one of us each one of us is a leader each one of us is a leader if you if you are okay if you agree with me that you are a leader then just type l on the chat quickly please i am waiting if you think that you are a leader just type l quickly great great i am happy to see the response very nice so each one of us is a leader leader does not necessarily mean that we have a big team or we have a, a big number of followers even when you are leading your own life you are a leader 
and leading your own life is as difficult as challenging as leading the followers so as a leader krishna actually shows that path very clearly he is a strategist he is in mahabharat right from the beginning he creates the entire strategy but he does not participate as a warrior he does not participate as a warrior okay but actually the entire war is being uh, 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 is 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 going on through him only around him only the he is a tactful communicator okay he talks so beautifully that he gives the message very very clearly and he actually uses the language of the other person only if he has to talk nicely he talks nicely if he has to make some lies he do he does that also so he is a great tactful communicator then he is a grounded person he is a grounded person there is a beautiful story uh, in mahabharat about the ashwamegh yag when it was being done at hastinapura uh, not at uh, hastinapur rather at uh, uh, indraprastha by by yudhishthir and uh, he was worshipped as the first person अग्र पूजा जिसको बोलते हैं सो so, उनकी कृष्ण की अग्र पूजा की गई सो ही वॉज कंसिडर्ड टू बी द बेस्ट पर्सन हु इज टू बी वर्शिप्ड फर्स्ट सो दैट वॉज द लेवल विच वॉज गिवन टू हिम बट द ड्यूटी विच ही एक्चुअली एक्सेप्टेड फॉर हिमसेल्फ वॉज दैट ऑल द गेस्ट फॉर ऑल द गेस्ट ही जस्ट क्लीन देयर फीट वॉश देयर फीट एंड देन इन द एंड ही टुक्स द पत्तल्स आफ्टर ईटिंग द फूड those plates the uh, so so this is after the lunch he took those plates and those patals so that's what actually he did for himself so he was completely grounded and then in 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 uh, geeta in bhagavad geeta he says about himself he says that patram pushpam phalam toyam yome bhakta parichhati tat aham bhakti uphartam ashnami priyat atmana yani ke जो लोग मुझे खाली पत्र पुष्प फल पानी जो मुझे भक्ति से देते हैं मैं इस सब को बड़े ही दिल से अपनी आत्मा से उसको स्वीकार करता हूं मैं ग्रहण करता हूं तो वो क्या देख रहे हैं ही इज ओनली लुकिंग एट दैट इमोशन दैट भाव बट ही हिमसेल्फ इज सो ग्राउंडेड ही इज नॉट वॉन्टिंग दैट यू हैव टू हैव you have to offer only the sweet stream every day no it is not like that rather the reality is that he is only expecting that you can give him the the even patram and pushpam then he is a situational leader so jarasandh story you everybody knows that uh, because of jarasandh he kept on fighting with jarasandh almost 17 times he fought and then he came there and this time he left mathura and he went to dwarka and he was even given this uh, name as ranchod das ranchod das somebody who has uh, gone away who has left the war so and he said fine it's okay with me this is absolutely okay with me i i don't mind if people call me ranchod das so this was why because it was the need of the hour he was not wanting to kill the people the innocent people and he was also waiting for the appropriate opportunity to come so that he can actually kill uh, in a very proper manner jarasandh which he did later on through pandavas through bhim through bhim and other pandavas that's what he did later on as you know it so situation leadership a great example and he was very very decisive very very decisive so these are some of these qualities of a leader which krishna demonstrated through his life through his life and he actually brought up all these things in geeta as well so we are actually going to read uh, we are we are going to 
go through this session, which uh, uh, Ashish is going to actually talk about in the coming uh, few sessions we are actually going to talk about. Do you see these qualities of Krishna as the real quality of a leader? If you actually see this quality as the real quality of leader, just uh, type R on the chat quickly. Just type R on the chat. Just type R on the chat if you think that these qualities are the real quality of a leader. Great. Now, what is very, very important lesson we actually get through Bhagavad Gita is Arjun says, Arjun says that Karpanda Dosh Upat Sobha Prichami Tuam Dharm Samur Cheta Yeshare Chat Nishratam Bruhitan Me Shish Isteham Shad Shadimam Tuam Prapanam. With the miserable state of mind, suffering with faint heartedness, I am asking from you that my mind is puzzled with the regard to duty. My mind is puzzled with regard to duty. Tell me what is decidedly good for me. I am your disciple. I surrender to you. I have taken refuse in you. Kindly educate me. Now look at this. He says, I surrender to you. The problem is that uh, we don't surrender. We, we go to gurus, but we go with lots of ego. We go to different Sankirtan and Parvachan and we go to temple, but we still carry our own ego and our old baggage. Unless, unless we empty our old baggage, unless we empty the cup which is already full, we will not be able to get the knowledge which is being given by Bhagavad Gita. And we will actually not get benefited by it. So, uh, Arjun says, कि मैं आपका शिष्य हूँ, अतः मुझ शरणागत को आप शिक्षा प्रदान करें। तो लाइफ में कुछ भी जो सीखना है, if you really want to learn anything life, it is very very important that we completely give up our ego, we keep it aside, whatever learning we had in past, let it be there, don't evaluate, don't judge, just listen to Bhagavad Gita. And there are thousands of commentaries of Bhagavad Gita which come in different format. And as I, as I told you, whether you pick up uh, Vivekananda or Shankaracharya or uh, anybody else, you will be able to actually get lots of knowledge. So the only requirement is that uh, you need to surrender to that knowledge. Don't evaluate, don't judge. So with this, I close here. I'll invite your questions. In case you have any questions, you can unmute yourself and speak up. Thank you. I'll Rakesh. be happy to yeah. take your, yeah. Thank you, friends. Uh, Rakesh, you may, you may, yeah. Thank you. If you have any questions or comments on what Rakesh Ji has shared, please type in the chat or unmute yourself and ask. Uh, if you don't have any questions, we will move on. And then, yes, there is something which has come up. You mentioned Krishna lies sometimes, Rakesh ji. Yeah, so those lies, when I'm referring to, those lies are as per our definitions, as per our definition. So he, he, he actually did not lie himself. He prompted, you may be knowing, he prompted uh, Yudhishthira 
to communicate that uh, okay ashwatthama hato naro va kunjaro and what he did very 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 uh, uh, actively that when krishna uh, when yudhishthira said that uh, naro va kunjaro he actually blew his shank at that point of time so that duryodhan uh, dronacharya couldn't listen to that and before actually saying that making that statement before making that statement uh, yudhishthira even said ki look i am not going to i am not going to speak this this will be a lie i know very well that uh, ashwatthama is alive he refused but he said no this is the requirement of the time and you so so what what he did he he asked bhim to kill ashwatthama who was actually a elephant in the uh, korav's army and ashwatthama was killed by bhim and then he announced then he announced and he got it announced through yudhishthira because yudhishthira was some somebody who was known that he will never speak a lie so this is how we actually created that the another question was related to hanuman how did hanuman know bhagavad gita so hanuman was actually there on the chariot that flag of that flag of arjun so he was continuously there on flag of arjun and uh, whatever happened during the entire war hanuman was knowing it and when bhagavad gita was being spoken hanuman ji was also listening to that so this is what is the story behind this uh, there is one more question rakesh ji how would i gain clarity in life so clarity is actually a very big question in itself so clarity is basically that first you have to have the clarity that about what you want to have the clarity you want to have the clarity about your karma about your uh, knowledge about your bhakti you want to have the knowledge about uh, you want to have the clarity about your responsibility towards the society so you need to be okay you are saying that you need to have the uh, clarity about the career so you have to ask certain questions to yourself and if we go as per bhagavad gita everybody has three basic qualities sat raj aur tam so you need to actually do a self inquiry and find out that what kind of a person you are whether you are having the satvik pravritti or rasik pravritti or tamasik pravritti or ye teeno pravritti the all the three pravrittis are there in everybody in different quantities in different quantities so once you are clear about this then you will actually become clear about that what do you like to do and what you should actually be doing and if you if you pick up that path then you will be able to progress in your career any any other questions please so uh, friends thank you for your questions and we will now request you to share feedback we have been getting your comments on the chat uh, take uh, with this feedback form takes less than 30 seconds to fill out uh, so please uh, your feedback is very valuable to us i am sharing the link in the chat as we speak uh, please take this time out and and once you have filled out yes we will 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 zarif thank you for your question we are going to talk about the following sessions in couple of minutes from now uh, please fill out the feedback form and once you have filled out the feedback form please type fd in the chat feedback done fd
Thank you, Pallavi. Thank you, Veba. So friends, please keep filling out the feedback form and confirm to us on the chat. And now I would like to ask you how many of you would like to take your life to the next level? If you would like to take your life to a new level in 2023, please type NL in the chat box. If you would like to take your life to a new level in the 2023, please type NL in the chat box. Thank you, Pallavi. Let's see who else was. Thank you, Zareer. Thank you, Shivani. Yes, Viva, we will come back to you. We will have another question on, uh, we will have another Q&A and then we will dive deep into each question. Thank you. Thank you, friends. You are a very enthusiastic bunch of participants. And uh, do I have your permission to share about the program, which will help you to take your life to the new level? Please type P if I have your permission to take the, to share with you about the program, which will help you take your life to the new level. Thank you, friends, for giving me your permission. Now, I would like to share with you about this express four-week program that Rakesh Ji has put together in which he has condensed his wisdom from studying and applying Bhagavad Gita for over last uh, 12 years. This program will have four modules and the first one will provide the leadership framework, the spiritual leadership framework, which helps us in identifying the objectives of the business, the purpose of our business or our career, you know, why what we are doing uh, is so important, knowing the why is so important, then envisioning our future, what does my future of the business or the career look like? Uh, how do I set goals for sustainable growth? You know, do I want a growth which is like yo-yo or a consistent growth? You know, how do we set business goals? How do we create business value in line with the universal laws and create a strategy which is aligned with the ecosystem? Implementing the laws of manifestation, leading with service and contribution. Uh, this is what uh, Jim Collins talked about in his book as level five leadership. In his book, Good to Great, where he talks about ambition and personal humility as the qualities which is that level five leaders, which is the topmost form of leadership, uh, 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 you know, those leaders have. Connecting with hearts and hands, you know, how do we align? our body, mind, and soul to deliver superior performance, consistent growth, and how to get liberated from the worries of money, time, and sustenance, which bother a lot of working professionals and a lot of business owners. So this module, the first module, uh, will help us give, by giving a nine-step concrete roadmap which can help your taking your business and career on the path of consistent growth. The second module is about people. Anybody who has led teams uh, understands the challenges which are there in leading a team of people. So <laughs> this model will help by sharing strategies of leveraging manpower to grow, how to be people focused, how Many people are immune to change. So how do you anticipate and prepare for the change? Have big audacious goals rather than small incremental goals. How do you inspire people by leading by example? How do you remain unattached to the outcomes by focusing on the processes? How to be humble and human? And how to accept and promote diversity? So the second module of the program will help by giving us practical solutions on leveraging manpower for growing, holding your people accountable while still keeping them happy. <laughs> there are many, many challenges which we face while leading a business. These include hiring people, retaining people, growing people, firing non-performing performers, you know, people who are not performing, dealing with the uncertainty which is there in the organization, taking tough calls which may disappoint some people, ability to communicate clearly, you know, getting distracted, 
uh, you know, losing focus on the mission of the company, how to do personal and company branding, how to manage diversity, how to achieve targets, how to get acceptance from the people that you are the authentic leader that they should follow, ability to get things done, ability to uh, get your teams to collaborate. There are so many challenges uh, that the, uh, you know, running a business, managing a business has. And the third module will provide 18 sutras for leadership, which will help you achieve business targets, get works done from the team, uh, find time for yourself. You know, there are so many people who are burning out. There is a sense of overwhelm. You know, there is too much to do in too less a time and people get burned out. So this module will also share with you tactics and strategies to delegate work so that you can have time for your family, time for personal growth and grow your business. If you think this module is wow, please type W in the chat. If you think these modules are wow, please type W in the chat box. If you think these resonate with some of the challenges that you're facing in your business or in your career, please type wow, W in the chat box. <coughs> the last module is about the five sutras for stress-free growth. How to succeed without being stressed. This is about being authentic about realizing that we are not the only doer, being limitless, being growth oriented, having a growth mindset, realizing that there is no failure, removing the fear of failure and leveraging the most powerful creative force in the world, which is the power of intention. How to use the power of intention to create whatever you want to in your life. So this module four will help you create a working environment where you can be in a state of flow and produce superlative business results. And while you are stress-free, joyful, and you have a sense of fulfillment, have a work-life balance with high employee productivity and minimal attrition. So friends, these are the four super modules that Rakesh Ji has put together. I'll now invite Rakesh Ji to speak for a couple of minutes on his thought on creating these modules. So friends, uh, as I told you that uh, I have been working with the uh, hundreds of uh, business leaders and uh, I have been supporting uh, the business entrepreneurs very very closely so i found that they are stuck they are stuck at the different places in the business one of the biggest issue is that they actually don't understand that the what is the purpose of the business similarly they don't understand that the employees the hod's the functional heads don't actually understand that why are they why are they there in the team what is their responsibility they are not very clear about it whereas bhagavad gita actually has answers to all these leadership issues so this spiritual leadership what i'm talking about is not only about the entrepreneurs but also it is equally applicable for the functional heads and the other team members and even if somebody is starting a business or somebody is starting a career because the reality is that we are the spiritual beings in the human body okay we are the spiritual beings having the human experience right and as a result of that if you actually look at from that perspective we have forgotten our spirituality we have forgotten that there are huge qualities which we already have within us. And we are trying to struggle and we are trying to find out the solutions from outside. Whereas their solutions are there within, uh, within us only. So this program has been designed keeping this thing in mind that all those powers which are there within, how <laughs> you will be able to dig out those powers and will be able to make use of those powers to improve 
your life to take your life to the next level to take your life to the next level and not only for you yourself but also for your organization for your subordinate for your family members at home so this is how this program has been designed keeping in mind because the knowledge which we have been trying to get from the various mundane resources from this uh, physical world all that knowledge is actually there within us our scripture says that we have all the knowledge which is needed by us unfortunately we are not able to dig it out right so so uh, that is that was the purpose that was the objective behind this uh, program that we should be able to tell you that how the eternal knowledge of bhagavad gita can help you make yourself successful may you be as an entrepreneur or in your professional career or maybe in your family you can always lead a better life for yourself and your people around you thank you thank you so much rakesh ji for creating this power pack program and friends let me assure you that investment we are being a finance professional myself i am very conscious that we deliver high return on the investment that you make <clears throat> and the investment that is required is of two things investment of money and investment of time rakesh ji has invested over 50 lakh rupees in the last 10 plus years in educating and upgrading his knowledge and skills we are not going to ask you so many rupees or so many hours to uh, invest in yourself but what is required is investment of 7 and 1/2 hours over four thursdays uh, starting 12th of january from 8:15 to 9:50 45 pm this is after working hours so you can most of the people are able to get back to home by this time and join the sessions live and benefit from them <clears throat> to help our intention is to also help you support in implementing these lessons in your professional life in your uh, business and that is the reason we have also scheduled one bonus hand holding session on 8th of february which is the wednesday so this is the schedule of the sessions and the fees uh, for this program for the spiritual leadership uh, module is 15000 rupees for the seven principles of growth leadership is 9990 rupees for 18 sutras for leadership challenge is 16000 rupees and for five sutras for stress free growth is 9000 rupees the total package it comes to 49990 rupees but the new year we have a special gift for you and this program comes to you the four modules and one bonus session for 4999 rupees just by paying 4999 rupees you can participate in this powerful program start your 2023 learning the timeless wisdom that is contained in this ancient a scripture which comes directly uh, from the universal uh, godhead uh, krishna himself in case you would like to drop in for a single session uh, you know the price is 1999 and in case you would like to avail of a one to one coaching session with rakesh ji then the fees is included and it the price goes up to 9999 rupees friends i am very happy to share with you that we have a special bonus offer for those who take action because it is those people think that knowledge is power but actually knowledge is not the power the application of knowledge is the power so for those of you who they want to take action on this knowledge learn and apply this knowledge we have a special one is to one bonus so what this means is you can do this program along with one more person a whom you can invite to join with you in this program that person could be your accountability partner that person could be your family member it could be your parents it could be your siblings it could be your loved one it could be anyone you want to invite to be with you this could be your gift to your loved one to your friend to invite them to join you on this phenomenal journey of learning the leadership gems 
from Bhagavad Gita. So sharing the details of the modules and the fees once again, this offer is available only till the end of this workshop, which is still the bonus offer is available only till the end of this workshop. So you need to act fast. And once remit the fees by using Google Pay or Paytm to Ruchi's number, which is mentioned here, once you have remitted the fees, please type in the chat uh, so that we can welcome you formally to the program. Uh, yeah, the pay, the, you can do Google Pay, Zareer, if that works for you. We will also be sharing the uh, bank account details. So in case you want to do a bank account transfer, you could do that later. Uh, otherwise, if you're comfortable with Google Pay or Paytm, you can do uh, on this number. All these sessions are going to be live sessions, and that is the reason our Mindful Living programs have more than 90% completion rate because these are not recorded sessions. Here, faculty, in this case, Rakesh Ji, comes live himself, and he's there to conduct these sessions and answer your questions live. So all the programs that Mindful Living has, 90% is the completion rate. One of the questions we often get asked is, what if I have a meeting or if I'm traveling or I'm not able to join the session? All of our sessions, uh, amount depend. Okay, Zareer, these are uh, these are the three options. Uh, you can choose the amount if you want to go for four modules and one bonus session. The amount is four thousand nine ninety nine. In case you would like to avail of the coaching session also, then the amount is nine thousand nine ninety nine. Uh, and in case all of our sessions are recorded and the recording is shared in the group, uh, so in case you miss the session or in case you would like to revisit the session, uh, you can do so uh, by watching the recording. Thank you, Zareer. We welcome you to the program. Thank you for being the first participant. And this is the other question that we often get asked, when will be the next workshop? Friends, as Rakesh Ji shared, the last workshop was done last year in January. So we have an annual calendar. We don't know when the next one is going to be scheduled. So it's best to act now because that's how leaders are. There are they don't believe in a second chance. They act now. It may be possible that you may have enrolled for some program in the past which didn't work for you. And that is why all mindful living programs come with a money back guarantee and no questions asked. Anytime, any point of time you feel that this program doesn't work for you, just drop us a mail or WhatsApp and we'll be happy to refund your money 100%. No questions asked. Uh, sharing the details of the Paytm number once again, as somebody requested for it. And here, I would also like to share with you that Rakesh Ji has an experience in uh, conducting training for more than 15,000 working professionals. So he shares templates which will help you implement this learning. He shares assignments after each session, which will help you learn. And he'll also be available for any question answers outside the session also. You could connect with him. He has already shared his number in the chat. You could connect with him one-to-one -one for any query that you may have during the program. You also get a very attractively designed certificate of completion of leadership gems from Bhagavad Gita program. Friends, this is a leadership development program. And that is the reason we take very few participants. In this program, we will restrict the number of people we will take to only 10. So Zareer has already acted. So there are only nine more seats remaining. Please act fast and enroll for the program. I'm sharing the details once again for your benefit. Four modules plus one bonus session, rupees 4,999. Four modules plus bonus session and one one is to one coaching session, 9,999 rupees. Friend, this investment will pay for itself many times over. Thank you, Babuji, for joining the program. We really appreciate your joining the program. So, friends, we have only eight seats remaining now. Please act fast and join the program. The payment link, in case you are uh, want to make a bank transfer. Uh, these are the bank details. Uh, you can take a screenshot of this and make the bank transfer.
Thank you, Pallavi. Ashish, can you please show the scheduled slide again? Nagananda yes. wants to see. Yeah, Nagananda. These sessions are scheduled on Thursdays starting 12th. <laughs> 12th, 19th, 26th, and 2nd February. So every Thursday uh, uh, in January starting 12th and the first Thursday of February, which is 2nd February. And the bonus handholding session is on 8th February, which is a Wednesday. All these sessions are scheduled from 8.15 to 9.45 p.m., which is after the normal working hours. This is a time which most of our participants find comfortable in joining. So that is the reason. You may take screenshot of this and refer to this for now or later. The group, uh, the WhatsApp group for this program will be formed on uh, 11th of January. Uh, and that's where the future details will be shared with everybody. Uh, but you could stay connected with us in the interim if you have any questions or uh, queries. Um, now we open up the session to Q&A. Uh, Viva, you had some questions. Are you there? Um, I think she has left. Uh, but let me see, Rakeshji, if uh, I... And she, Viva, had some questions. Uh, she, Viva asked, the, uh, sir, the answer you gave about clarity, which chapter should I refer to from Bhagavad Gita for the same? Okay, so the answer to this question is that uh, this particular uh, Sat, Raj and Tam, these three characteristics of the human being, they are actually mentioned throughout and uh, they are referred in different chapters. It is not one particular chapter. You will have to probably study more the first six chapters which are referred to Karam Yoga. In the first six chapters, you will be able to understand it with the bigger clarity. However, even in the Gyan Yoga as well as the Bhakti Yoga, the mention of these three characteristics is there. But for your purpose, if you go through the first six chapters, probably you'll be able to understand. Hope I clarified. Yes, Rakeshi. Uh, Viba is not there, but I, the recording will be shared with everybody who has attended and registered for the session. So she will get the answer uh, when she looks at the recording. Uh, friends, thank you very much for your time. We'll be happy to take any questions or comments that you may have uh, before we wrap up the session. Uh, we have another 10 minutes to us. Uh, so feel free to shoot your questions uh, so that we can clarify. Don't feel shy. Anything that you ask will benefit you or the person who's going to watch this recording. So please take this opportunity to shoot your questions at Rakeshji. And I assure you, you will get distilled wisdom uh, in his responses. And Rakeshji, while we are waiting for questions and comments to come, is there something you would like to add? Uh, you know, that, to share with the participants. Yeah, so uh, in the meantime, uh, first of all, I would request you all that uh, make use of the best time and uh, please uh, ask your questions. But one thing uh, which I would like to share very commonly and uh, very commonly spoken uh, shloka of uh, Bhagavad Gita, which talks about that karmanneva adhikaraste ma phaleshu kadachana. So, People understand this shloka very, very differently and they make use of this shloka as per their own understanding. People say that uh, if we only have uh, the right on the work and we should not think about the result, then why would one actually work? Lord Krishna does not say that. He says very, very clearly that you have to concentrate, you have to focus on your work. When it comes to the result, there are so many other factors in the universe which are actually controlling the result. It is not only your work. Your work is one of the element. It is one of the element. So the better your work is, the better focused you are on your work, there is a possibility that you will be able to influence, not create, but you will be able to influence the result. 
So he says very clearly that you just do your work and the rest you forget. You leave it to me. You leave it to me. You leave it to the universe. Why is he saying so? He is not saying that there is going to be somebody else who is completely going to be deciding arbitrarily whether it should be given to you or not. No, it is not that way. Your work, your karma is going to influence it, but your karma is not going to decide it. Is not going to decide it. Why? Because there are so many, so many other factors which are actually are contributing mm -hmm. to that end result. Yeah. And you, you, you must have seen also, you must have seen like uh, you go to the best doctor and uh, the best doctor gives you the best medicine and you take care of your health, but still sometimes you fall sick. Whereas for the same ailment, the same doctor gives medicine to some other patient and he gets okay. He, he, he gets his, his health back. And you may wonder, so why it is so? Because it is not only the medicine or it is not only the doctor's karma or your karma. There are a couple of other things which are actually contributing. So he says that you must go to the best doctor. That is there in your hand. That's it. If you don't even do that, then forget about it. <laughs> thank, thank you for sharing that, Akeji. That is something which uh, confuses a lot of people and the clarity that you just provided is very insightful. And that is why I think non-attachment uh, also comes, you know, because we we have only right to the action, not to the results. So we should focus on the process, not to the outcome. Uh, thank you very much for sharing that. We'll just stay here for another one or two minutes to see, see if you have any questions or comments, and then we will draw the session to a close. Friends, for the, benefit, for the sake of those who are not watching, please ask your questions. They will benefit from it. There are no good or bad questions, so please go on. And if you have no questions, maybe you can just share what your takeaway is from this session. What is one thing that you really liked uh, that you know that opened your eyes or that appealed to you? What is it that you like? Alternatively, you could just unmute yourself and wish everyone a very happy, healthy new year, and we will draw the session to a close. Thank you, Rajesh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, friends, for joining us uh, for this session. Uh, wishing you and your families a very happy, healthy, prosperous 2023. Take your time. You still have, some people have requested us that they have had issues with making the payment. So this offer, one is to one bonus offer, we are extending till the end of the day today. So you can use this time from now to reflect and invest in your, uh, this, I can assure you that this is going to be possibly one of the best investments you will make in 2023 into your own learning, into learning the wisdom that is there in our ancient scriptures. On that note, thank you once again, everyone. Thank you, Rakesh Ji, for sharing your insights. Thank you, Zari. Thank you, Babuji, for joining us. Thank you very much, friends. Thanks a lot. And Happy New Year to everybody once again. Thank you. Thank you, Zareer.